Hello everyone, in this tutorial I will show one of the ESP accelerator design and integration flows. This flow leverages a tool called HLS4ML that is able to automatically generate an accelerator starting from a Kera, PyTorch or Onyx model. With this flow then ESP automatically integrates these HLS4ML accelerators into a full SOC and we will go all the way down to deploy the SOC on FPGA and test it. There's a written version of this guide as well on our website, as usual. Uh, make sure you read there what are the prerequisite tutorials and um, go over them before getting started with this one. You will also see that we provide some pre-built material so that you can try the experiments without having to go through all the steps uh, of the tutorial. Uh, mainly in this tutorial we will have a first part where we use HLS4ML to generate an accelerator. Uh, HLS4ML generates accelerators in C, C++ for the tool Xilinx Vivado HLS. And then in the second step we will move into ESP and with an interactive script we will import this accelerator generated by HLS4ML and we will automatically integrate it and test it into ESP. As a first step, we clone the ESP4ML repository. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will be using a Keras model already provided in this rep repository. So we can move in. You need to install the tool. I, I've already done it, so I'm not gonna run it, but this is the command. Then we move into the example models. We're not gonna build a new model ourselves. We're just going to generate one here. You can see from Keras config that the default, the default um, model is a three layer. This is a three layer multi-layer perceptron. It's just three fully connected layers. In our case, we do want an input and an output. These are not provided. So we provide them on the written guide on the website. You can go on our website. You can go and download them there. The, we provide very short inputs and outputs. It's only with eight inputs and eight outputs. And what you're going to do is you're going to fetch them wherever you, you download them from. It's just these two files and you copy them into this Keras folder. Basically, we took some um, input and outputs from a branch of this HLS4ML repository and we just made them very little, very short. So now we are ready to convert the Keras model into a Vivado HLS accelerator. It's pretty fast. Now you see that you have a Vivado HLS project folder called My HLS Test. We are just going to go inside and run. We're going to run a um, C simulation of this uh, accelerator, only the C simulation. Running the C simulation generates this uh, C sim result log. Uh, which we're going to use because these are the results produced by the accelerator already quantized with the fixed point precision of this accelerator and we're going to use them to validate into ESP. Um, then this is it. So remember this, this part because ESP will need to import this part. I'm already going to copy it for later. Okay, now we can move into ESP. Here I already cloned it. You should go through the prerequisite guides, especially the setup guide to have uh, everything ready, the tool chain, the environment. Um, now to integrate an, an HLS for ML accelerator, we are going to launch our interactive script for generating accelerators. In this case, we're gonna call the accelerator MLP three layers. Then we're going to choose the HLS4ML design flow. We're already in the ESP 
home, which is what I suggest. So for this, we keep the default. Here we can paste the path of the Vivado HLS project that we generated with HLS for ML. Here, uh, this is a three digit hexadecimal. It's an ID for your accelerator. Here, here you can really insert any number that doesn't overlap with other existing accelerators. In the written guide, for example, we say 194. The only limitation is that in decimal, this number should not be bigger than 1024. Okay, the data bit width of this accelerator can be found going into this parameters file. So this is the this is the data type of the accelerator. So it's 16 bits in total and six bits of integer part. So we could do 16 bits, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we do 32. So we're actually wasting some bits in this case. But as long as this number is bigger than the precision of the accelerator, it will work. And you can choose between 8, 16, 32, and 64. Uh, as we saw a second ago, the fractional bits were 16 minus 6, so 10. Then we go back to this file and we can see that the first layer has 16 inputs and the last layer has 5 outputs. So input data size 16, output data size 5. And going back one more time, as I was saying, those input and output files that we moved around, they got transformed into these T TB input features and TB output predictions. Each of them has have the same number of rows. And as you can see, it's eight rows. So we have eight inputs for the test bench. Now this is done. This is all you need to do. Your accelerator is fully integrated in ESP. And from this moment on, all the steps are the same as for uh, what we showed in other guides for system C accelerators or for C, C++ accelerators. Um, so as usual, you move into a design folder. For example, in this case, we choose the VCU 118. I have here a little script to uh, set, um, set the environment variables. You make sure you set them as described in the setup tutorial, in the setup guide. And now the first thing we do is we run the high-level synthesis for the Vivado HLS accelerator that we just imported. So this Vivado HLS project. The Vivado HLS project is now, by the way, into accelerators, HLS for ML, you see there is a folder, MLP three layers, which is which has been generated by our steps. Here, all of these fall, all of these things are generated by ESP. So, test bench, the scripts for uh, HLS and simulation, source files, and this is an XML with some um, information needed by the system. Uh, here are some other files, and instead this HLS for ML folder is nothing but exactly the content of the original uh, my HLS project. So if you look at this content, you see build project firmware. If we go back to our project here, you can see it's the same. So this is just a copy and paste of the project inside of ESP plus the addition of all these things for wrapping and interfacing the accelerator with the rest of the ESP system. So how do you run HLS with ESP? You just type the name of the accelerator, it will autocomplete, and then HLS.
you can see first that it ran the C simulation with those input files and output predictions that we um, moved around earlier and the test passed. So you see how this script not only imported the accelerator but also added a test bench that works automatically. Now this take a while and for all of these steps that take a while I will just fast forward. Now what does the HLS uh, step generate? First of all the whole project is running in accelerators HLS for ML name of your accelerator and there will be an HLS work and then this is the technology Virtex Ultra Scale Plus in this case um, of your FPGA so that's the Vivado project then once the um, once Vivado is done generated the RTL the RTL is placed in tech again the technology of the FPGA you chose and then in accelerator MLP3 layers here you have two versions of the accelerator inside there you find the um, RTL here you see the generated RTL there are two versions because we uh, always generate the emitter with 32 bits and 64 bits because the 32 bits will be instantiated when you use the Leon 3 processor and the 64 bits when you use the Ariane processor um, now we see in a second so now the accelerator um, exists it's been generated and it's in Verilog we are going to configure an SOC with the ESPX config command as I said here when you choose Ariane or, or Leon it will change your option for the accelerator so here of course now we can find our new accelerator you see it's the MA64 if I choose Leon it goes to the MA32 um, okay so very simple SOC we just want to be able to test this single accelerator we save and we close now at this point we can already start running RTL simulation uh, first of all we're going to compile a bare metal application that has been generated automatically for this accelerator where is the application well it's in soft then there's two copies one for Ariane one for Leon let's see where the one for Leon is driver MLP 3D layer so inside here there is a Linux application a Linux device driver and a bare metal application okay and these are all generated automatically from the interactive script we are ready to simulate command for simulation is make sim or make sim GUI if you want to also open the GUI when you want to simulate the bare metal test of an accelerator you need to specify the test program otherwise this make sim will always execute the hello ESP bare metal program and then in the bare metal folder that has just been generated we have the executable for this new accelerator also in this case this step will take a while so I'm just gonna fast forward once we're inside model sim we can just launch with run dash a and wait the test will be pretty quick what we have in the bare metal test is now it's scanning the device tree to find the accelerator the probe worked so the MLP 3 layers 0 accelerator has been registered um, this execution runs with non-coherent DMA so accelerator accessing uh, memory directly you see the execution is very short because start and done appeared simultaneously and then the validation passed okay so this was our bare metal test Now we validated the accelerator in simulation. We are ready to generate an FPGA B stream. Just generated will make Vivado scene. In 
in this case I already generated a bitstream earlier so I'm just gonna switch to that because this step will take about half an hour 45 minutes once the bitstream has been generated you will find a link and a bitstream in your design folder and the next step is to compile Linux This step not only compiles Linux, but it also compiles the user space test applications for the accelerators. Once Linux is done, you will see that in sysroot application test, we have an executable for our accelerator. This is the Linux user space application that we will run on FPGA. We need to go and fetch the input and output data for validation for the test. We can go to Leon3 drivers, our accelerator, app, there's a folder called data. Just copy this folder into sysroot application and test. Now we're ready to program the FPGA. You might need to set, and you can see the previous guides for this. You might need to set, for example, these two value, FPGA host. Here you say something, and the server port. Look at the previous guide for knowing how to do that. And uh, now we are ready to program the FPGA. In the meantime, in a different uh, window I will open Minicom and connect it to the FPGA so we will be able to see the output printouts. To run the bare metal test we use make FPGA run but make FPGA run as uh, as I was saying earlier only runs the default bare metal test which is a law from ESP to run the, the accelerator bare metal unit test we need to specify a test program we have it here in bare C just like we did earlier for the simulation this is getting copied onto the FPGA and we can see here the printouts which are the same as the test on the, the test executed in simulation and we get a pass so next step would be to run Linux. So this target first programs the FPGA and then copies over the Linux image. Linux is getting copied through Ethernet onto the FPGA. If we move to Minicom, we, can, we will see the Ariane core booting. So we move to CD application test. We run the unit test application. This is a, an application generated automatically when earlier we ran the interactive script and then it gets compiled when you run make Linux. And we can see that it finds the accelerator and the test starts, finishes and the validation passes. So this is it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for following. I hope you enjoyed it. To stay up to date with the latest ESP news, uh, you can take a look at our website, uh, our YouTube channel, our GitHub, and we also have a Twitter account.